Yeah. How do you, is it working? Yeah. <laughs> How do you determine one versus another? Well, the macro are easy because you can see them on a scan or detect them or feel them on a physical examination. The micro, we can't today. And so what we wind up doing is putting patients, when, they're, when they first come in with their diagnosis of breast cancer, we try to put them based on the characteristics of the tumor, um, which is probably the most important factor, um, and characteristics of the patient to some extent. We put them into categories of risk of having micrometastases. There's no point in doing scans and things like that. You never find these things. Um, and, and yet people want them, but it's a waste of money, and um, I just never get them except for patients with more advanced disease. So it's a little bit of educated guesswork. We put patients into a category of, of risk. We can uh, get it down to, to a percentage. I tell my patients that they have an X percentage chance of having these micrometastases, and therefore if we don't treat those, they are going to recur and they're going to develop tumors in some other part of the body, and then it'll be incurable. But having said that, um, let's say that we've estimated that a woman has a 20% chance of having micrometastasis. That means that 80% of patients, just like that person, don't have them. And yet we wind up having to treat the entire group of, say, 100 patients. 80 of those patients don't stand to benefit at all. 20, 20 of those 100 patients do by getting chemotherapy or by getting hormone therapy with tamoxifen or aromatase inhibitors or whatever. So one of the challenges is to be able to select those patients that have these micrometastases in a much more accurate way, either by imaging or, or detecting circulating cells in the blood or, or by predicting much more accurately based on the genetic makeup of their tumor. Now we use a few things to, uh, to tell us whether that tumor is a good tumor, so to speak, or a bad tumor. But every tumor is different. Every tumor has its own molecular fingerprint of gene changes that have occurred that cause the tumor in the first place. And those changes are also reflected in the aggressiveness of the tumor. And many people are now working on gene signatures that will help us predict who's got them and who doesn't. You can't see them, so you have to do the best you can with other predictive models. That's a great answer. <laughs>